We're back here on the main event on Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP, coming to you live from the Temple University Tech Center. Temple kicks off American Athletic Conference play this Saturday, 12 o'clock noontime, over at Lincoln Financial Field as they'll take on Houston. And now let's welcome in the American Athletic Conference commissioner, and that's the one and only Mike Oresco. Mike, it's your buddy Zach Elbin, Chase Sr. How are you? Hello, Zach. How are you? And Chase as well. Is it Chase? I want to make sure I got that right. It is Chase, Mike. Thank you. Great. Nice to see you, Chase. Uh, yeah, no, Zach, I'm excited uh, for, for the opener, and uh, I'm pleased to, to be on with you today. Well, we appreciate you coming on. And no one would have ever imagined when you took over the Big East Conference that all this change would have happened. And now we're going to the American Athletic Conference, and you had a plethora of schools move in and move out to the conference. How do you plan to stabilize the American Athletic Conference? You know, I think, Zach, we're already stabilized. I don't think there's any doubt that uh, we've made remarkable progress in the last eight or nine months. Uh, we have a, a good group of schools committed to each other. Uh, we'll have 12 by 2015. We have 10 now. We have some change still. You still need you still need your roadmap, uh, you know. But we're we're getting there. We have uh, two leaving after this year. We think we have to work out exit terms, and three joining, as you know, Tulsa, East Carolina, and Tulane, and then we'll have Navy. But we're stable. We've got uh, you know the ACC grant of rights certainly uh, did a lot to stabilize the environment. We don't know that there's not more realignment down the road. Nobody knows. Nobody can predict that. But we think that things have settled down. There's a real feeling in the college community that for the next several years things should be, you know, stable. And, and our conference is a very good conference. It's going to be a good conference in football. We have to build football. I think we'll have instant credibility in basketball. Uh, and Temple's a big part of that. Uh, so I think again we're we're in very good shape. We uh, we financially we're stable. We have a great TV deal, and I think you've seen some of the announcements recently. All 90 of our conference games will be on either ESPN platforms with a handful on CBS Sports Network. 40 of our non-conference games will be on mostly ESPN platforms. The rest on ESPN3. We haven't even announced the non-conference schedule yet. So we've got a, a wind at our back right now. Everybody's very optimistic, and uh, we'll just see where the chips fall. So when you have this new conference, there's a lot of change that comes in, like you mentioned, and now people want to see an identity of this conference form. When people say, hey, Mike, define what the American Athletic Conference should look like, what do you say? Um, I think we'll have a, a clear identity. I think we'll be uh, perceived as a, a group of schools that uh, is, is right knocking at the door of the, you know, that, that so-called power tier that is extremely competitive, <clears throat> that is a, a mix of, as ESPN had said in their crawl over the weekend, a mix of uh, former Big East uh, schools and Conference USA schools uh, that came in. Uh, we essentially were the... Uh, the football schools who played in the Big East and, and the best of Conference USA. Together, we will form a very good conference that covers a, a reasonable geographic footprint. It's not, you know, uh, nationwide, but it is it is a reasonable footprint, and we will be very competitive. I think they'll get to know our schools. They'll see individual rivalries like UCF and USF, uh, Houston and uh, SMU. I think you'll see Temple in Connecticut and Temple in Navy. Uh, I think you'll see Cincinnati in the Eastern schools as well as Cincinnati and Memphis and uh, Tulsa with the, with the Texas schools. New Orleans is right in that mix as well with Tulane. East Carolina will, will bring a tremendous football pedigree. Uh, they're going to see a very, very uh, strong football and a strong basketball conference. Basketball, of course, uh, we've got Louisville, we've got Memphis, UConn, Cincinnati, Louisville for one more year. Uh, we've got Temple, of course, and Fran's doing a great job there. We also obviously uh, think that there's potential at SMU with Larry uh, Houston with James Dickey and also uh, the two Florida schools, Donnie Jones and then Stan Heath. Uh, we've got uh, USF and, and UCF, UCF at, and USF respectively ready to compete. So I think we're in pretty good shape in that regard. You're actually right, though. We need to create an identity. Uh, the identity is, is maybe not you know, completely formed yet in the minds of our fans. But we think it will be. And you have some wins like Tommy Tuberville uh, you know, against Purdue Saturday. And people will know right away that we're a conference to be reckoned with. Mike Oresco, Commissioner of the American Athletic Conference, joins us on the main event on Philly's number one college radio station. And Mike, it's Chase Sr. here. The progress has been very impressive with the formation of the American Athletic Conference. I remember just about a year ago you were meeting with reporters at Lincoln Financial Field talking about the future of the Big East. Now all the talk is on the AAC. Uh, and... 
Louisville and Rutgers are on their way out after the season. You mentioned Tulsa, East Carolina, Tulane, and then Navy is coming back to join the American Athletic Conference. What was your pitch to these institutions on why they should join the American Athletic Conference? Chase, that's a very good question. Uh, first of all, uh, I think it, it's, it has to be preceded by uh, the, the first point, which is we wanted to keep the remaining schools in the Big East which played football and the Conference USA schools that were already committed to coming in uh, together. We wanted to keep those schools together. We wanted the, those schools to know that this was the best place for them. The splintering off back to either Conference USA or some of them possibly to Mountain West or some of them to the MAC would not be in their best interest. That we had a potentially very strong conference here that could be very visible, that had uh, you know the potential to do a, a TV deal with ESPN, and we got that done, and we got the CBS TV deal as well. Uh, our presidents and ADs made that commitment back in January. Now. In terms of getting East Carolina, East Carolina had already joined us in the fall, as did Tulane. They felt that we were obviously uh, a conference that was, was worth joining. Uh, and then, of course, th and that happened after, in the wake of Rutgers and Louisville. That happened after Rutgers and Louisville. We weren't planning on any further expansion when we had Boise, San Diego State, you know, Rutgers and Louisville. The Rutgers and Louisville uh, uh, you know, moves obviously were a surprise to everyone in the college community, a big blow to us, obviously. But we regrouped. Uh, East Carolina was anxious to join us, knowing that uh, we would be still a very strong league. Uh, Tulane uh, felt the same way. Uh, it wasn't, you know, Tulsa uh, was very receptive because, one, Tulsa, as you know, has played with those schools in Conference USA. Right. Tulsa is a, an excellent academic institution, and they have a lot in common with SMU and Tulane and, uh, and Houston and others. And also, that brings me to another point, Chase, that I think is worth mentioning, and I've talked about this in various uh, you know, interviews. We have a very strong conference academically that we're very proud of. We have really good schools that provide really good opportunities academically for our student-athletes. I mean, you look at Connecticut, one of the top state schools. You look at what Cincinnati's doing. You look at the quality of Temple in Philadelphia. You look at uh, SMU, you know, an outstanding you know, private school. You look at... Uh, you know, Houston, a major research institution, our two Florida schools are enormous, and they have enormous clout uh, and scope. And then you look at uh, a place like Tulsa, another small, outstanding academic private school. And then you, you, you look at Memphis, and, and, and I hope I've met, and the Naval Academy, one of the, the best, obviously, academic uh, institutions in the country. I, I don't I hope I haven't left anyone. East Carolina and, uh, is an outstanding uh, you know, uh, university with a huge regional impact. And last but not least, Tulane is one of the top 40 academic institutions in the country. So we can provide a conference that gives kids an opportunity to get an outstanding education and yet still compete at the highest level. I mean, one of my goals all along, Chase, has been to give our kids uh, and our coaches and our fans a chance to, you know, to compete and to see competition at the highest levels. We wanted to maintain that. We've had that with the schools in the Big East. The Conference USA schools have had that, and they're coming in now to a, an even better situation where every program will be elevated because of the competitiveness of our conference. So we think not only will the schools benefit uh, by being together, but that uh, you know they will be provided you know some unique opportunities. I think our TV deals point to that. Our TV deals support that notion. And we also have, uh, obviously, we've generated a lot of good favorable publicity because I think, again, we rebranded in, in a successful way. People probably doubted that we could do that. Uh, we developed revenue sources and we developed a fair way of, uh, of sharing them and people wondered whether we could do that. We resolved the Catholic 7 uh, situation, which was very thorny, very knotty, but we managed to get it done. Uh, and then we got the TV deals done. So I think all in all, we're in a much better place than we ever uh, expected to be. I think we we all felt that we could get there, and we put our heads down and tried uh, hard to, to just deal with each issue as, as it came. But I think in the end, we ended up in, in a far better place, and everybody's very optimistic about the future. Now, with Philadelphia being the fourth largest media market, the university has obviously been taking strides to improve the state of this football program, especially with a recently renovated practice complex and an indoor practice facility. The consensus is that football rules because it's been proven that the sport reels in the big bucks. How big of a player is Temple University in making this conference sustainable? I think Temple, Temple can be a huge player. And by the way, I would... I would uh, congratulate uh, Matt and the players for a really game effort at Notre Dame. I was very proud of the way they played. You know, they got behind quickly, and things could have really gone, you know, gone uh, 
it the wrong way, and, and they hunkered down. They played well. They moved the ball. They had a few tough breaks, so that could have been, you know, a very, very close game. So I'm very proud of the way Temple played in a very tough game with a new coach and a new system against, obviously, a, a team that had uh, been in the championship game last year and is loaded with talent. Uh, I was just very proud of Temple. I think Temple can be a, a huge, have a huge impact in our league. And I also think, obviously, uh, you, you point us out something that, that I hadn't really mentioned, and that is we have major markets. One of the selling points uh, in our league, uh, for our league, is that we are in major metropolitan markets and very good markets, and markets where one can recruit in football as well as in basketball, uh, obviously in Texas and, and Florida. And Temple will benefit by that because, you know, you're going to be playing there. You're going to be visiting those teams. You're going to be in the news there as a member of you know, the American Athletic Conference. So I think I think Temple's future is, is very strong. I mean, you have... You, We've hired excellent coaches over the last several years. Al Golden rebuilt the program. Obviously, Steve Adazio kept it going, and now you've got Matt. I'm just very impressed with Matt and very impressed with what he did. I think we'll see great things. I'm really excited about the game this weekend. I think Houston Temple is going to be a great opener for us. I'll be there. I'll be flipping the coin. I want to. We have a commemorative coin, and it's it's got an A on one side. I want to make sure I know what heads or tails is when I do that. <laughs> I know you don't want to you know mess that up, but. Uh, going to be uh, a lot of fun to be there and uh, you know again Neil Theobald and Kevin I mean they're doing a great job there uh, you have all the tools uh, and you have a great market which will support you which will support Temple football and Temple basketball we've already seen the strides Temple basketball's made you know uh, with Fran that was a great tournament effort last year uh, and they're going to benefit enormously by being in a conference with UConn and Cincinnati and Memphis and Louisville this year and then SMU with Larry uh, the two strong Florida schools. Uh, so I think all in all, uh, and then the last thing, which again is very important, I alluded to it earlier, the exposure that all our schools are going to get, including Temple, is unprecedented. It's absolutely unprecedented. Are gonna, next year, the new football deal kicks in. There's, there's a, an odd situation. We had a football deal that extended one more year beyond our basketball deal. So the new basketball deal starts this year, uh, and that's going to be great exposure for Temple. They're going to have all 18 conference games on national platforms, on ESPN, and, and Maybe a handful of games will be on CBS Sports Network, but most on ESPN platforms. In addition, uh, non-conference games, Temple's non-conference games, are, will be generally on ESPN platforms, uh, virtually all of them. This is unprecedented exposure. And then when you look at football, beginning next year, 58 of the 66 football games that we expect to play will be on ESPN national platforms with a handful sub-licensed to CBS Sports Network, maybe one game a week in football. So consequently, Temple has an, an, another enormous opportunity to get exposure in football, as do our other schools. To give you one example on that, this year we played um, you know, nine opening games. I think uh, you know, several of them were on ESPN3. Next year, all of them will be on ESPN platforms, or one game will be on CBS Sports Network. And that, again, that kind of exposure will aid in recruiting. It'll generate fan interest. I think you'll you'll find that your fans will become more energized as, as Temple gets that kind of exposure, recruits. Uh, I'm excited when, when obviously you have a coach like Matt, and then you've got Fran, and I think your Olympic sports will benefit as well. And we have obviously a very strong women's basketball league with UConn, and that will elevate all our other programs. Mike Oresco joins us on the hotline. Gelvin Chase here, WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. Commissioner, a few more questions right before we let you go. And you talk about all the exposure your conference is getting, and I think you're doing a great job with this conference, with the circumstances you were put in. But how important is it that now you're getting these big games against the Power Five conferences, the, all the talks of D4? How, how important is it that you actually go out there and win some of these games up against the big opponents? Well, look, it's important, Zach, to be Competitive, but I, I want to put things in perspective. You can't judge a conference by one week or two weeks, especially a conference like ours, which really has tremendous potential in football and will, will grow. Now that this new conference is formed, it's going to be much more competitive for the teams. Uh, USF had a tough opening game, but there's no doubt that Willie Taggart will get it done there in my mind. I think Willie's a great coach. He's proven what he can do at Western Kentucky. Um, he doesn't necessarily have a full cupboard right now, but he will. And USF is, is you know, they're, they've had eight years in the Big East in a BCS conference, a great pedigree. UCF is, is already there with George. He's done a great job. They're a little under the radar right now, but I don't think they will be for long. So I think we've got, you know, tremendous potential, you know, in, in football, you know, as, as we move forward. And it's just a question of, again, you know, you have to, uh, you have to win some games, no question. You have to be competitive. But if you, you know, you take it on the chin once in a while, it's not the end of the world because we know what we have here. 
Now, I think we will be competitive, and, and I think it, it helps, obviously, uh, to have a big win or two here and there. Uh, we do have an opportunity, as I said, to play what I call the power tier. I don't want to call it the power five because I'm hoping that we can, you know, we can edge in there, you know, at some point, or at least in the public perception, uh, be there. But if, if we're playing power tier conference teams on a regular basis, and we will be, we've got over 100 games with them, if you include a handful with BYU uh, in that mix, uh, and we also will we'll schedule probably 30 or 40 more non-conference games uh, over the next six to seven years. Uh, so we'll be playing them uh, quite a bit, and uh, we think we'll have a chance, obviously, obviously to compete. I do think in two or three years you're going to see pretty significant, um, you know, change in terms of the competitiveness of a lot of our schools. Where some of them are just getting their footing, and in this league, they're going to be challenged. They're going to be challenged to get better. They're going to be playing better competition, and they've beefed up their non-conference schedules. You know, USF is going up to play Michigan State. You know, Memphis is hosting Duke, and Duke's been a pretty good team the last few years under David Cutcliffe. Uh, you know, USF is. Uh, also going to host Miami. UCF is going to play at Penn State in a couple of weeks. We're hoping for a good result there. Uh, and USF is going to host South Carolina. We're hoping that's a good competitive game. We've got you know Houston hosting BYU. We've got Cincinnati who already uh, beat a uh, you know a Big Ten team. Uh, they're playing another one this week. Uh, we've got uh, you know UConn hosting Michigan with a chance to make a statement at a tough opener. But Towson, Towson's been a good team, and Towson gave uh, gave LSU fits last year. So that's uh, just one of those things. So. You know, Temple obviously had a chance to, to play Notre Dame. We'll, we'll have some other good games. Obviously, I, I was at the Maryland game last year. Uh, Temple will have a chance to, to prove its mettle. Uh, I only, I really do believe, Zach and Chase, that, that this conference will will get better. I, I really believe that. I, I look at it and I see the resources that people in our league have poured into their programs. Uh, they're really trying. They want to be uh, playing at that level. They want to provide those opportunities for their student athletes. Uh, and I think that'll bear fruit down the road. It won't happen instantly in football. I'm not saying it will. I think basketball will probably have more immediate credibility. One, because we have the defending national champion still in the league. And that's helped us in football with Louisville being a national title contender this year. Uh, and some, obviously that, that elevates all our teams because the exposure that Louisville gets and the attention Louisville gets redounds to the benefit of our other teams that are playing Louisville. So that's going to help. But in basketball, I think we'll, you'll see some you know, immediate results with UConn and Memphis and other programs being, you know, fairly loaded. Uh, football, it will take a little more time. But remember, uh, you also said something earlier that I think is quite true. Football has been driving the bus in terms of not only conference realignment, but in terms of the value of a conference TV deal, which is so important and which also helps basketball. Uh, and we need to get better in football. And we are, you know, we're the football schools that were in the Big East, and football schools, obviously, who also play very, very high levels of basketball from Conference USA, and, and Temple obviously had a dual, and, you know, obviously in the MAC and in football. Um, but uh, if you look at our, our league, I think you see, uh, you know, enough uh, initial uh, potential uh, to, to get everybody's attention, you know, and, and we've done that. Uh, I think people are curious about us. Uh, they're talking about us. You know, even when we lose a game or two and, and they're critical of us, they're talking about us. I think they care about us. I think they see that the potential is there. The markets are important. You know, when you have markets as big as and important as Philadelphia and, and Hartford slash New York for UConn and, and Cincinnati and obviously the two huge Florida markets and Texas, you know, Houston and, and Dallas and others, uh, and then you have schools like East Carolina that have big fan bases and Tulsa that's had a great program for years. And Tulsa will be a real factor in basketball with Danny Manning as well. Long tradition with Tubby Smith, obviously, having coach there, and Bill Self. So the pieces are in place. It's up to us to, to compete. As I said before, I've said it many times, actually, uh, PR is not going to replace performance, but, but I do think you will see performance. But I don't want us to be held to an unrealistic standard. I don't want us to be held to a double standard. You know, FCS teams won some pretty significant victories this, this week. Uh, two teams in the Big 12 lost FCS teams, one of them one of their top teams. We didn't have any of our top teams lose, you know, at this point. Uh, and, you know, we think that, uh, frankly, uh, you know, we'll, we'll only get better. Well, Commissioner, we appreciate a few minutes today. We really do. We'll see you out at the game on Saturday at Lincoln Financial Field as we get ready to start a new era in the American Athletic Conference. So we appreciate it, and uh, let's talk to you again real soon. Don't be a stranger to our show. Uh, thank you, Zach and Chase. Really enjoyed you guys. Uh, you guys do a terrific job. Looking forward to seeing you on Saturday, and uh, keep up the good work. Thanks, Mike.